Um, this is Guillaume from Flurry to talk yep. to us about, uh, about mobile gaming on the two big platforms. So with that, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, thanks. So hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Guillaume. So um, I work on the publishing side for our European offices. Um, I manage the publisher relationship for Flurry. Um, so my role is to, on a daily basis, to help publishers um, generate revenue and help them in their monetization strategy, um, whatever it is through advertising formats or um, through other kind of monetization support we can bring them. So um, actually, I, I just want to ask you, like, who know Flurry in that audience? Okay, and who knows Flurry because of the analytics? And I, I guess the rest know Flurry because of the advertising and the monetization platform. But I mean, something that we've noticed is the fact that um, Flurry is really well known for um, our data, our analytics, because it's a free service that um, we have been proposing for years now. Um, and actually, I think some, yeah, okay, some slides are missing actually. Um, but yeah, uh, so F Flurry is tracking, um, so we track to date more than 230,000 applications and we work with around 70 or 80,000 developers in the market. Um, just to tell you that I, to date, um, and the last figures show that we are tracking um, 2 billion sessions a day, which is pretty much eight times what Twitter is, is tracking. Um, and yeah, we, we've been tracking, on a monthly basis, we probably track like more than 800 like, billion even. So it just gives you the idea of like the, the volumes of data that we've been collecting. And in pretty much every single smartphone in the world, there is at least one, ap one application using the Flurry analytics system. So um, we've We've been collecting all this data for years that we are trying now to, to use to power the, um, the mobile ecosystem and um, through our analytics platform, um, through our advertising network and also through our different like monetization product that we are offering to the publishers and to the different brands. So my, um, actually my objective today is to give you um, a bit of uh, better understanding and some data on how healthy the smartphone market is going these days. Um, and also um, uh, just give you some elements on the different challenges and strategies that publishers um, and adv advertisers are having these days. Um, so as you can see here, it's pretty much the way um, the Flurry is structured. So um, there are both sides, publishers and advertisers. Uh, our core business is Flurry Analytics, where we have been collecting all this data. Um, and the product that you see, number two, App Circle, is actually the Flurry on advertising networks. Um, so we've been starting like two years ago by offering um, on a cost per install basis, like. Uh, our, our solution product, and now um, we are kind of um, moving away from uh, like pure rewarded installs, I would say, and we are offering different formats like our video clips, which is our key product. We are also offering um, re-engagement recommendation and a mix of like CPC and CPM um, product and rich media to target direct brands. Um, so there on, on the left side, we've actually announced yesterday officially and sent a press release about AppSpot, um, which is a brand new ad management and, uh, and direct deal. So allowing you to uh, mediate the different networks um, such as like in Mobi, IAD, etc. And also to use our direct deals and to either, I mean, use your sales team or use the Flurry sales team to go and target direct brands based on our analytics. Um, the ad analytics products on the right side, um, on the advertising side is, I mean, our objective there is to bring a bit of science and a more long-term view on how do publishers um, and our brands acquire new users and like track the efficiency of the campaign post-download. Um, I, I will go into more details later on, but. So just at a glance, here are the different elements that you can track using the Flurry analytics. So the first one is usage. So usage means uh, it, it can be like the frequency of use of your application, the session length, how many new users, how many active users do you have. So it's a whole range of like product that we are offering through the usage. Um, the events are actually like, what we mean by an event, it's a any single action that c can occur in game. So it can be opening the app, closing the application, uh, making an in-app purchase. I mean, it can be anything. So we're tracking like all these different events uh, that you can set up and you can set up literally up to three different events for each publishers. Um, the audience is, uh, 
a product called Personas that we have launched recently, um, allowing you to define what type of other application your users are also interacting with. So you might be able to check that from my entire audience, 20% of them are sports enthusiastic, 10% of them are photo and video fan, 50% um, of them are hardcore users, etc. So it just gives you like some tips and insight on um, the type of application that your users are also using, so that you could potentially retarget these users, or maybe decide not to retarget these users, because you have already acquired them. Um, the conversions is what we also call funnels, it's um, the different user paths for a user to reach a specific event. So it could be, as example, I want to track how the user end up uh, into buying a pack at 20, I don't know, at 20 dollars or something. So you could see that the user is generally reaching the level six and then he struggled because the game is getting complicated and then he's pushed to download a very expensive pack at 20 dollars or 40 dollars or so. So it's a different user path to reach that. Um, portfolio is giving you um, information on like cross applications. So um, as example, that specific user from my application B is also using my application C. So you can see and just help you uh, monetize and be more performing in your cross promotions. Uh, and, and the last one, the customization, is just a way to customize the, 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 the primary page on, on flurry.com, uh, allowing you to track and access directly the information that is important to you. So um, as you can see here, I mean, the number of sessions we are tracking for the last years uh, keeps increasing massively. Um, and I mean, what we've noticed is that the time spent on the application is becoming more and more crazy. Um, to date, the figures show that 80% um, of the time spent on your device is spent like within the application versus 20% spent on the mobile browser, on the desktop browser. So not only overpass the mobile browsing, but also the time that you spend on your mobile browser on the application, um, it's time that you're not spending um, on your desktop at home. Um, and actually, two interesting facts there. Um, so the 81 minute that you see there is actually now to date around 93. It means that like you spend on a daily basis an hour and a half on your application um, versus like an hour and 14 minutes on, uh, I mean, doing web browsing. Um, and also something that we've noticed is that, um, I mean, Facebook is obviously getting a lot of traction, but the time spent on the other social networks, all aggregated, is higher than the time you spend on Facebook. So um, with the rise of Pinterest and Twitter and like MySpace and some others, as you can see there, I mean, people are spending more and more time on some of the networks than just purely um, using Facebook. So um, here is a pretty, I mean, clear overview of um, the market and um, so like to date we are tracking like as I say um, and the number of devices is pretty much around six, 660 millions um, and the estimation for next year around 1.1 billion and I mean Obviously, you, you will have here like the, the total addressable market there on a very like conservative way is around two million, and we are reaching next year one million. In a more aggressive way, we think that we could potentially reach up to five million devices. Which, I mean, which is pretty huge, um, and. I mean, that is explained in a different manner. Like, we see that a lot of, you have a new range of tablet and smartphone at a much lower price now. iPad has announced his iPad mini. Uh, you have the Kindle Fire. You have different Samsung tablets as well with different kind of size and prices as well. Um, so, I, I mean, all these elements explain the fact that it is just the beginning and we expect the race to be even bigger um, in, in the next two years. And actually, if you compare that to the number of like mo mobile and internet subscription users, uh, they are around 2.3 billion, and the estimation for next year are just already half of that. So it gives you an idea of uh, the volume and the audience that you could potentially reach. Um, and actually, we, we noticed that apps are also kind of disrupting the world. Like, if you take US and China, they are still leading the charts massively. But like China last year at that same time was around 22 or 25 million devices. And in a year, they multiply by 400% the volumes of devices they have. Um, they have activated. Um, and I mean, we're pretty sure that China next year will very probably overpass that. Um, it also gives you an idea, like if you check the other country, you can see that all the Western countries are the fastest at growing. I mean, they have all um, already activated a lot of device. And yet yeah, this slide go together with the previous one. As you can see there, China, uh, I mean, the increase in China has been like more than 400 percent um, in a year which is absolutely massive and as you can see there i mean 
it's true that the Western countries are the fastest one to adopt a country, but the, f the fastest growing one are actually countries from East. So they are countries that you need to take into account when doing and driving user acquisition. It's very important for you to um, consider all these countries because they are developing and they are growing really, really quickly. Um, also, I mean, that slide explains the, the, the fact that some Western countries are now reaching a sort of like saturating point um, among the 15 and 64 years old. As you can see, all these countries have already reached like, um, I mean, 75% of that audience have already like kind of a smartphone or a tablet. So it also means that now the growth is going gonna, is gonna to be kind of slower, um, meaning that again, I mean, the countries from like the Eastern side of the world are now growing massively and it's very important to target them and actually yeah, there are four key countries that we call the BRIC uh, which are which are like Brazil, Russia, um, India and China and these four countries we think that um, are, will probably lead the market soon together with um, I mean the UK, the US and Canada and, uh, and I think that these four countries, I mean, you need to really consider these four countries when creating the game, whatever it's about the translation, whatever, whatever it's about like translating your advertising space and your campaign and so on. Um, so yeah, that slide is very important. Um, uh, I mean, f from what we see, we know that all the publishers monetize today uh, probably 5% of, of their audience. And that 5% is generating 95% of their revenue, which is pretty much representing by the 77% there. Um, but uh, as you can see as well, I mean, the total revenues in dollar approach now 9, nine billion. Um, and from that, I mean, 23%, which is pretty much 2.2, um, is represented by advertising only. So. Um, Congratulations to everyone that has already embraced uh, um, the, the kind of premium and in-app purchase revenue. But this, there are still like huge revenue to make for you um, based on the advertising, and we expect that to grow massively. Um, so as you can see there, and I hope there is no one in that room from Nintendo and Sony, but um, I, I mean the smartphone and uh, the, the mobile industry is literally killing like all the handheld console and platform. Um, I mean, yeah, they, they managed to raise from like 19% to 58%, and the expectations show that um, next year it will be around 70% plus. Um, so having said, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that the handheld market is dying, and the guy from PSP Vita were there just before, so. Um, what I mean by that is that it may remain a niche in the sense that um, we think that a lot of like kids and very young mature now will probably get um, a PSP and a, a, or a Nintendo D a PS Vita, sorry, or a Nintendo DS because they can afford to have a smartphone or a tablet, or they can borrow their parents. But I think it will be the main audience in the few years, and like more teenagers and adults and young adults will probably um, now keep playing on the smartphone and tablet because the user experience and the quality of games that we have is getting bigger and better. Um, so th actually this pie show the, 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 the revenue and um, I mean, you need to take that in balance because, uh, as you can see there, I mean, the, the revenue from the game sector is moving from 72 to 69%, um, but um, actually the left pie should be actually much smaller than the one on the right, just because the overall revenues and figures have increased massively. So e even though the percentage that is represented by games is kind of a, a, a bit lower, they are still the leading like category from far in terms of revenue. But it also means that that other category that is mostly representing by social networks, um, photo and video application, are getting like a bigger part of the, of the pie. And um, it also means that publishers need to work harder to retain their user, to monetize their user in a much better way because the competition is getting, is getting stronger. Um, so just at a glance there, um, it's just an overview of how the gaming uh, platform is kind of, and the gaming genre is performing overall in different countries. So they are a very diversified country, but as you can see there, I mean, um, games are still pretty much leading, um, except for China that is mostly, um, I mean, because of some uh, social networks there. 
Um, also, I mean, that slide is very important, especially for game publishers, just because we think that, um, that there is a kind of shift between uh, very casual, time-killing type of games from more uh, Miko arc or titles. And actually, it's represented there in that pie by um, the Abdio, which is the, uh, the average revenue per daily active user. So as you can see there, I mean, um, the, the part that is over 75 cents per purchase is actually, um, is actually increasing, and I think it's a really good signal and a, a really good figure there because it means that the quality um, and we explain that by the, the quality of the product that is getting better um, people are getting more involved it's a market that is getting more mature as well so people pay I mean they tend to now pay and they are getting used to pay for um, items that they like of pack of currency because they are getting really engaged in the game um, so I think it's a very good like signal of like where the market um, where the market is going on the gaming industry so, um, talking about the, uh, I mean, the marketing virtual cycle. I mean, here it's like the the, the way, uh, and I mean, these slides are there because we think that a lot of publishers are coming to us um, with like very clear but very basic, I would say. Um, like idea of how to drive audience and strategy just because this is the way the market has been structured. Um, and I mean, something that we want to propose there at Flurry is the fact that, um, I mean, have a different thing and have a different thinking of like approach to uh, generate marketing and user acquisition. And also you will see in the following slides, but a new way, a new marketing, like kind of virtual cycle there. Um, so for, for the moment, and then I'm dealing with most of the publishers in Europe, um, and I mean, most of them are coming to me and say, yeah, we want to reach top chart. We want to reach top 10, we want to reach top 20. So we have that budget. Um, who cares about the quality? Because we're going to buy anyone we can, then we're going to reach top charts. And when we're going to be top charts, we're going to benefit from organic downloads and, and organic lift, as you can see there. Um, but we, we don't think that it's a very viable like kind of uh, strategy. And I think since the beginning, it's a broken strategy and it will always remain a broken strategy. Just because, I mean, the, the price to acquire a user is now getting absolutely insane. Um, we are working with some publishers, um, and we know that uh, some publishers, gaming publishers, can pay up to 6 or $7 uh, to acquire a user. And we also see that the average price to acquire a new user is around $1 or $2. And you actually can see that in the following slide, uh, what you need and what's required for you to reach top 10 or 12, 25, it's at least like 50 to 100,000 installs, uh, meaning that it's 100,000 or $200,000 for you to spend in a day or in two days maximum to be able to reach top charts. But like very few people actually can do it. Very few publishers can do it. And it's only, I mean, the case for the big guys. And what you see there on the subsequent colon is actually what are needed and volumes of downloads the following day. Meaning that if in one day you reach, um, you can manage to generate 100,000 installs, the following day you will need more installs actually because the organic part of that will play a big role. So um, the way the algorithm is calculated on iOS and Android um, is to ensure that you are day by day increasing the volumes of downloads you're making to stay on the chart. And we think that it's a pretty dead model, especially on Android, because um, it's, I mean, the algorithm on Android is, uh, and on the Google Play is actually much more complex than it is on iOS, and the number of uninstalls that you will generate um, are probably gonna kill you. So if you generate 100,000 installs in a day, and the following day, uh, you have like five five thousand active users. I mean, and the following day, like most of them will have probably uninstalled your application. You will go down the chart like faster than you reach the top chart. So we think that w we should approach a more kind of strategic and more scientific approach to that. Um, and by using the analytics and knowing your audience really well, um, in order for you to target the right audience at the right price. I mean, th this. This slide is actually interesting because there is a kind of explosion in the number of apps. Um, as you can see there, you have more than one million, um, one million applications available on both main app store. Um, and they all want the same thing. They all want to be top charts. They all want to be discovered. But uh, what we think is like, if you want to get discovered, you need to be discovered in the really wide way. Um, 
And I mean, I, I will deal with that later on, but um, it's very hard. I mean, the, the, the competition there is really tough. And um, we, we don't think that from these 1 million apps, they will all pay $100,000 a day to reach top charts. So we think that the model is like naturally be change and shift um, to something more strategic. And actually, like retention is very important here because it gives you an idea of the, the churn that is generated. I mean, we estimate that after three months, um, you've probably lost 75% of your audience. And after six to seven months, you're losing probably 90% of your audience. Um, and I mean, the thing is, it, it comes back to my previous point. Um, what really is the strategy when you acquire so many users and um, the following day or the following week, you've lost all of them? All you need to do is to target the right audience and keep working on that core audience that is yours and not spread your budget everywhere because you're going to end up losing money. Um, so as you can see there, I mean, a way for you to retarget and like use uh, some of the furry product that we use, like re-engagement as example, is like from these 120 million users that you remain and that you have, I mean, all you want to do is not retarget the other 1.8 billion. What you want to target is, and retarget is a specific segment of that audience. So it can be the, your biggest spender. It can be an audience that um, has used your application just before the last update. Um, it, it can be a user that has used your application more than once. I mean, it's your role to, and to understand your audience and to know exactly how your audience behave and who are your wealth and who are your key users, the ones that are spending money and playing your games. There is no need to uh, target everyone. Um, so this is why, I mean, a, a kind of new approach. Um, as you can see on the left side, I mean, the current approach is very basic. I want to acquire user to rank beneficiate from organic lift. But on the right side, I mean, our new strategy, is, uh, what we think and the strategy will shift is somewhere where you acquire, but you acquire a specific segment because that segment is important for you and that segment is key. And based on that, you allocate a significant part as well of your advertising budget to retarget the users that you've lost so that you keep working with that key audience that is yours and that is at the end of the day generating, I mean, most of your revenues. Um, I, like just a figure I used at the, at the beginning of the, um, of the presentation is the fact that 5% of your audience is making most of your revenues. So just keep that in mind because you will need to find a way to, I mean, keep them and retain them, but you will also find a way, a smart way to target and address the 95% orders. And I mean, we are proposing some products and there are some solutions on the market where you could use advertising to retarget. And we think that um, advertising actually, if it's really well implemented, if it's customized to the look and feel of your games, uh, if it's embedded in your game, it doesn't really alienate the user experience. And people are getting more and more used to advertising within their application, within their tablet, within their smartphone. And we don't think that um, it's negative user experience experience when, it, when it's well done. Um, so just here are like s some of the products that um, we, we propose and that, that are potentially um, suitable for you uh, to to target and retarget your user. So the first one on the left is new. What, what we call by new is, is like, um, it's a way to acquire a user on a CPI basis. Uh, it, it's a recommendation engine that is very similar to what Amazon proposed. So we leverage our analytic to know exactly, I mean, the users of that application have also downloading that app. So we are going to be offering an application that is suitable for a user and that is likely to be downloaded by that segment of users. The re-engagement actually allow advertisers to um, retarget users that have their application installed but haven't been opening your app for like a week or two weeks. So if you decide that after 10 days or 15 days, a user that has not been interacting with your, with your application sorry, is a dead user, you could potentially retarget that user and re-engage with that user because we are able to track that user through our analytics. Um, Actually, we, we have the custom creatives, which is a kind of new service that we offer, especially for brands and rich media on a CPC and CPM basis. But the, the key product at Flurry, um, and that we think anyway that is going to be a key product for a lot of people, are the trailers and the video clips, because we think that the, the user experience when uh, watching a trailer is actually much better. So. 
like think of it when you put your application on the store i mean all the users i mean all they can experience is few screenshots and a short description of your app but it doesn't really give you a good idea and i mean it's very similar to the industry the console industry i mean you don't buy a video game at 70 dollars by watching few screenshots and reading a description all you're doing is like you're watching different trailers of gameplay you have a clear understanding of the graphics and the sound and a lot of elements and it's exactly the same for uh, we think the mobile gaming so we are proposing that trailer where you could start advertising on, on a, a cost per completed view. Um, and actually, that's also a product that you could implement within your application um, to start generating revenues. So a user that doesn't want to buy in-app purchase within your games and buy currency and access items just because they want to play for free, and it's a lot of them, or just because they don't have any credit card or account associated, um, it's a good way for them to access some virtual currency. So they will watch a video. At the end of the video, they will get a bit of currency that they can redeem in-game. It takes them 15 to 30 seconds seconds and they never leave the application um, and and also a smart way to address that is that um, thanks to the analytics you could potentially target a user uh, that has never buy any um, any in-app purchase and it that uh, it has already quite advanced in the game so you could say well I want to propose advertising and I want to propose a monetization product to only the users that have never buy in-app purchase in my game and that are already level 10 or that have already completed like two race in my racing game, or I've already finished a competition, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so. I just wanted to let you know that you have about four minutes left, so. All right, yeah, I'm gonna rush. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so just um, at a glance, it's the d different element in terms of targeting that Flurry proposed. You could target a user that is 1824, uh, based in Russia, that is a sports enthusiast, and that is, that is the owner of um, an iOS or uh, like a smartphone or a tablet. So you could really go really deep and then retarget as well um, the most valuable segment based on, uh, I mean, when was the last time they've used your application or if, as I said, um, if they've never interacted with your virtual currency and never bought, you could retarget them and offer them advertising. Um, I mean, that ad analytics product is um, actually for the advertisers. Um, it will give you the opportunity to track the efficiency of each campaign. If you do a campaign tomorrow with AdMob by Ad in Mobi, you will be able to track the number of downloads that each of them is making and also associate a quality tag to it, so to track the efficiency post-download. So if it's important for you to say, yeah, not only they generate all downloads, but I want to track from these downloads how many of them have a uh, bought an in-app item, so how many of them have at least finished the game once, etc. You could add that specific tag to it. Um, yeah, and it's actually my last point is, uh, yeah, our objective is to understand that and ensure that all the, the gaming, the game is publishers uh, start acting and thinking as media property, media owners, because this is the way you're going to generate more revenues by doing direct deals with brands, etc. Um, as you can see there, I mean, the tie spend per media, mobile is really high, but the advertising spend is not following the trend. And it was exactly the case a few years ago with the, uh, the web industry. You had a lot of like users online, but very few advertisers and we think that that will na naturally shift and you need to be ready for that because it will be a huge amount of money there and dollars that and because you have the audience because you have the scale you could get that money so the way it's structured now is like most of the advertising is on a performance basis and we think that uh, premium and direct deals uh, actually could generate much more for you if you knew exactly your audience and how to sell that audience so if tomorrow you have a, a sports game uh, a football game and tomorrow Nike is launching a new pair of shoes Nike they will never target your entire scale your entire audience what I want to do is target only the male that are 18, 35 years old and that are sports enthusiastic or football fan because it's the only um, it's the only target and segment that matters. And actually, if you manage to um, really attract like premium advertising, premium brands by leveraging your analytics, uh, you will be able to increase quite massively your ECPM. Um, I mean, some brands are there already, and uh, I mean, as I said, you have the audience, and this is, uh, this is what you have on the left side, and this is what advertisers need and what they want. It's a, a short segment, a specific audience in your game. Um, so yeah, just to resume, uh, it's, I think the key point for us is to um, ensure that you understand your audience and you use the analytics to understand that audience. Um, you can define the advertisers that you want to attract and that are important for you based on that audience. Um, you, you obviously create 
best game possible because the product will remain key always and the quality is necessary for that. Um, you package it in the right way and you either use your sales team to go and pitch these brands or you use Flurry because we have a sales team to do it. Um, and then, yeah, you execute the campaign and then you have a better chance to maximize your revenue. Nicely timed.